good girl. Add it down. Roll over. All the way good. Oh, you rolled over in your bone. That didn't feel good. Violet, down. Ready? Roll over. Good girl. I wanted to give you a little tour of the new studio space. Uh, it's all finished. It's mostly finished. I need to put some things on the walls as far as like uh, artwork and stuff, but it's pretty much done. I'm going to hang some things above my sewing machine there. I've got that blank wall. So this is the little sewing corner. And then I have a craft table with a TV. Um, I've never had a TV up here. And so Jim installed it on an arm so I can swivel it around and sit in my ugly comfy chair and spin on my little spinning nano. Look out the window. I have another chair up here in case somebody wants to come hang out with me. I am getting a slip cover for it so it won't look so ugly up here. I have that huge blank wall I still need to put artwork on. Uh, that's my knitting machines under there. That cabinet's got miscellaneous craft stuff. I got a little spinning, um, no, not winding station. I am going to make a quilt to go on that wall. I'll talk about that later in a podcast. This is my hutch that I've got all my yarn in, my stashed yarn. Um, the whole top shelf is stuff left over from my shop and the bottom shelf is stuff that I've bought or have been given. Uh, so now everything's all in one place. I still have my thread cabinet in here. Stuff I'm gonna talk about in the podcast. So I left my thread in here because the lighting is so good and when I wanna work on a quilt, uh, I can pick out the proper thread under this good lighting. My ironing station in front of my design wall, which can be slid out if I need to uh, access the design wall. That four drawer cabinet is something I picked up on a Facebook marketplace. I'm gonna sand it down and paint it so that it fits in here a little bit better. And yeah, get some things up on the wall and I'll be ready to go. So I have to figure out where I'm going to record in here because now everything's in different spots so I'm loving it love the color love the layout love how open and simple and minimal it feels I know probably not minimal to some people but compared to what was in here it's way better so yeah hi everybody my name is Carrie this is the creative obsession podcast thank you so much for joining me today whether you are new or returning I appreciate you being here uh, for those that are returning, you notice that I am in a little bit of a different spot. I am in my studio, but the studio has been uh, renovated, freshened up a little bit. So hopefully I've got a little bit of a video before uh, before I started here so that you can kind of see what happened. Uh, I took the long arm out of here and um, repainted and moved things around and I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I love the openness of the room because the long arm took a lot of space. I still have the long arm, it's just in a different place in my house. So I can still do that when uh, the urge strikes me or when I actually finish a quilt. Um, so I painted everything and it's a nice soft blue gray color and I absolutely love it. So hopefully you could see all the little things in the tour. I'm not really sure uh, how, where I'm going to end up landing for positive of where I'm going to record these podcasts because everything's in different spaces and different places. And I, I want to make it as easy as possible for me to set up and have good lighting and all that kind of stuff. So I think that this kind of looks a little boring compared to what was behind me before, but I don't have anything up on the walls yet. So I feel like no matter where I sit, the background's gonna look a little bit boring. So I'm sitting in this comfortable chair. <laughs> this is a chair that uh, used to be my mom and dad's house and when they moved, they couldn't fit it anymore. And so I've had it here at my house not really having a good place for it. And so I brought it up here. And now if somebody wants to come over and sit and knit with me or sit and visit, I have a comfortable chair. It's ugly. It's like a little old lady upholstery. <laughs> so I've got a slip cover that's coming that I found on Amazon that should fit over it. This is an antique quilt that uh, my mom had. She would use it to decorate and she was kind of going through a bunch of stuff and um, I couldn't let her get rid of them. So <laughs> I just draped it over here and uh, so I didn't make it somebody did long long time ago 
So welcome. It's been a little while. I've been busy. This was a pretty big project, um, taking everything down and most of it out. Not everything. I was able to kind of cram everything into the middle of the room and work around it. But you know, if you've painted anything or done anything like that, it takes a long time. Then getting everything back in, figuring out where I want to have it. I'd have it set up and go, yeah, it just doesn't look, feel right. And now I feel like I have everything where I want it to be. And it's a matter now of just getting some art on the walls, whether that be quilts or um, some painting or stuff I purchased or whatever. Um, I've got empty walls. I didn't really want to put everything back up the way I had it before because I felt like this was a fresh space. I wanted kind of a fresh start. And um, so I'm kind of approaching it that way still kind of hesitating to put things up. Uh, Jim was able to hang my curtain rods up today, so now I felt like I could kind of hang stuff up around that. Um, anyway, so it's still a work in progress, but for the most part, it's done, it's functional, and I'm excited to actually kind of sit in here and start making stuff. Um, the other night, it was kind of the first night I was able to just sort of sit up here and Jim was watching football and I've got my TV up here, which I haven't had a TV before because I usually just listen to music and I didn't think I'd want a TV, but it was so nice. I was watching some stuff that I wanted to watch and just sat up here and spun on my spinning wheel and I was just such a happy camper <laughs> and I didn't have to watch football. <laughs> so it was a win-win because Jim didn't feel bad about it. So anyway, pretty fabulous. Um, I can't find my notebook that I usually keep my notes in for the podcast. So um, hopefully there wasn't anything that I needed to refresh on. Um, there was a giveaway for yarn. I've already contacted the winner and sent it to her and she's got it. So I, I think that was all I have to remember. Um, it, it'll turn up. There's also a bag of zippers that I can't find. <laughs> it's funny because when I, you know, boxing some things up and I was trying to go through stuff we brought a whole bunch of books to my local library um craft books and and just different books quilt, quilt, some quilting not too many but a few quilting just books I was like oh you know what I've had this book I've either made something out of it or I haven't and and I don't need to keep the book anymore so I brought them to the library and um so that was good so anyway going through stuff I tried to be mindful of like you know You've had this for a while. Are you really going to make whatever this is for? And I threw away a bunch of stuff. I've got a good sized pile of stuff to go to the thrift shop. And um, just really trying. It's hard. It Because being a crafter, and I'm like, but I could maybe use that for something. Because someday, when I want a little whatever that is, and I'm going to be like, you know, I used to have that. <laughs> and now I can't make whatever that is because I don't have that piece. It wouldn't be the end of the world, right? So I'm tr I am tried to get rid of a lot of stuff. In fact, my cabinet that I have in here with my miscellaneous craft stuff isn't even full. So there's room to grow. <laughs> so um, I, anyway, so as I was pulling some things out, because I would like stuff stuff in cupboards and like just try to clear the decks. And um, it then when I it then got me all kind of uh, renewed on some things like, you know what, I really do want to want to try that making that or whatever it is and I feel now that I have a good space for it because I didn't have a place to just craft I have a great sewing space um and and that was my main focus for a lot of years but I'm expanding that that's not my only hobby I mean I've got a lot of hobbies but and I like to try things I like to learn things and so now with having the table be set up as a craft table instead of just a cutting table I feel like I've got a place to make a mess, so to speak. So um, I'm excited to see where that's going to go. Um, so one of the first things that I kind of uncovered and um, thought I would do is that I have a plan for, uh, if you saw in the video, my little yarn area where I've got my winder and my yarn set up, there's a great wall for something to be put there. So I'm going to make... The wall hanging version of this Lloyd and Lola it is gonna be this where you've got a single um, single mama with some like dingle ball things 
and because I the, the big size is 61 by 70 I don't really want to make that big of a quilt um, th so the wall hanging is 45 by 60 so that'll be perfect that'll look really cute there and I thought okay let's do a little llama and then I'm started kind of shopping for furniture sitting you know what looking online and I'm like I don't know what I want it to be and then as I was putting some things away and somehow got into my fabric because I think I had stuffed something in the fabric I found all the fabric I need to make it so it got me really excited because the background fabric is going to be this beautiful uh, eggplant purple it's a hand dyed yarn or not yarn hand dyed fabric that I had purchased years ago to um make a quilt i bought some other fabrics from this dyer um so vicky well she still dyes fabric she does a beautiful job um but the the quilt which i'll put a picture in here uh didn't really work out i did it trying to use a forget the name of the company if i find it i'll put the information here and any links to anything will be in the description box below but I made a quilt, it was a Lone Star quilt, and you used this printed interfacing stuff. So basically you sewed to the interfacing kind of like you would do um, with paper piecing. And it was going along pretty well, but when it had an adhesive so that you pressed it, and when I pressed it, it kind of puckered it. And then I was like, I don't like the way that looks. And so I just lost all desire to make it. And then I didn't know where I was going to hang it anyway. And maybe I'll quilt it and it'll look fine. I don't know. But I've held on to this fabric because, you know, hand dyed fabric is expensive as is hand dyed yarn. You're paying for someone's artistry and, and work that went into it. So I've coveted this piece of fabric. Well, there's plenty here to make this wall hanging. So the background's going to be this like um, eggplant purple. I think I'm 90% sure that the llama's going to be this like um, mottled gray color. And then you need, because you're doing like dingle balls, you know. Let me refresh your memory. Here, I'm, we'll just show you this. But you got these like dingle ball things that are on the top and the bottom. Well, back in the day... I, I dabbled in um, dyeing fabric myself and I used it for just doing some art quilts and just I didn't sell it or anything I just did it for the fact of making something and trying something new so I have this is just part of what I have left of some stuff that I dyed and so I'm gonna get into it and use it for dingle balls I think it's gonna be really cute I'm really excited about it I think it'll be a perfect quilt to hang up on the wall over there and um, I, I'm looking forward to starting it. I am going to finish my Forest Friends quilt first for my niece. Um, she is a senior this year and my goal was to give it to her for graduation so I have to finish it before the end of the school year and I will. I'm on the last little critter. I have not touched it since the last time I went on a retreat so um, it's time to get back and finish that. And um, as of now, I'm still planning on giving it to her because I kind of hemmed and hawed and was like, is this something she's really going to want? So as far as I know, I'm still going to give it to her. <laughs> I still have to finish it regardless. I'm going to finish it. So once that's finished, then I will start on my, I don't know, do you think it should be Lloyd or Lola? Probably Lola because it'll be girly and so it'll be Lola. Anyway, that's going to be a fun project to work on. Uh, something that I came across in kind of cleaning out some of my stuff and, you know, purging and stuff like that is something that I'm going to do as a giveaway. So if you are a quilter or you want to attempt this, this is a quilting giveaway. This is a kit that I bought. Um, it is Sylvia Pippin Designs. I had seen her speak at a guild meeting. And so it is a kit to make this a uh, bird of paradise block. Um, she was she had all the different blocks and then you put it together and you make a whole quilt. But I just bought the kit for the bird of paradise. So you have a stamped piece of fabric so that you can do the applique and the sashiko stitching. There you can see it like that. So I will. Um, 
give this away. Uh, you leave a comment below this video on YouTube. I will put your name in a hat type of thing and pull a name out. I will draw the name on, what did I pick? September 23rd. And um, somehow I'll have to notify you. I may just have to make a little video as the winner because I won't have your contact information if you're if you were um, leaving a comment here. So um, I'll if I ha if I don't record right after I pull it, then I'll just do a little like um, drawing winner video. So if you want to win this, it makes a 12 by 12 block. All the fabric is in it, um, and the, the, the thread for the sashiko stitching, which is that white stitching, um, yeah, you can win that. Uh, domestic only, please, just in the United States. I don't really want to pay to have it shipped overseas, sorry, but um, it just costs too much, and I'm never 100% sure you're going to end up getting it anyway. So, um, yeah. So leave a comment below if you want to win that. Um, let's go into some spinning. I have been doing some spinning a little bit. I mean, I've been a little busy, but um, I have found that now that this is kind of set up and I have a really nice setup that I enjoy spinning up here because um, I just put my spinning wheel on, on a TV tray and I can just sit in the comfy chair and watch my movies or whatever. And I'm really liking that. I'm doing a lot better. So the first skein of yarn that I did on my Nano, I talked about my my uh, spinning um, spinning wheel, the electric eel Nano. So it's a, a electric spinner, and I did a skein. So it's not perfect. It's lumpy. It's different thicknesses and whatevers. I don't know what the yarn is. It's some type of wool, and I you know not too horrible. Not anything that I can really do anything with, but I'm going to save it as my, like, hopefully in a few years, I look back and go, hey, that was as good as you could do when you started, and now you've gotten better. Hopefully I've gotten better. But I have still been spinning, and I have been spinning this fleece that I bought from Nanette Wake. Um, there she is. It is Nanette Wake Studios. I will put the link to her shop down below. She has an Etsy shop and a website. So it was this braid of like lavenders, pinks, and some gold colors. It's merino. And it's spinning so nice. I wasn't sure. You know, I'm just like, I don't want to ruin it because I love the colors and stuff. But I did pretty darn good, I think. Um... I could probably fit more on this spindle because there's like a little or a bobbin a little room right there I could fill that space but kind of felt like I needed to to uh, start spinning another another bobbin but I'm really happy with the way that turned out so I just started spinning a second bobbin and I'll ply them together and I should get about a fingering weight yarn which is what I was hoping for um Yardage wise, I don't know. I guess I won't know until I wind it on my um, Swift and I can I figure what I can do is open my Swift up so that it it's like a yard around and count how many times it goes around when I'm winding this plied yarn onto the Swift. So my concern at this point is because the Nano is so small, the bobbins are pretty small. And, you know, I fill this with a single like lace weight single I'm not going to be able to fit two bobbins onto this to make um, you know a skein of yarn I think this weighs about 40 grams I didn't weigh my fleece first I what I did is I weighed this and weighed an empty bobbin and did the math and it's about 40 grams on here so if I get about 40 or 50 grams on another one it's about a full skein of yarn um, not going to fit on here. So I have to have a lot of short skeins or I hang on to it until I get something bigger that can ply it. Kind of playing with that. I don't really, I don't have the funds to buy a big spinning wheel. Um, so kind of looking for a used maybe. I don't know. That's still on the fence. Don't tell Jim because... <laughs> 
he'd be fine. He supports me no matter what. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Really enjoying spinning on my Nano. Um, yeah, I kind of get into a little groove, kind of get going, and then you have to stop. Like you feel like you're just kind of moving along, going along, and then you have to stop because you have to move a little slidey thing. But whatever. So that's been my spin. Um, I've showed before I've got plenty of fleece to um, spin other stuff. So uh, I want to kind of get through this one and figure out what I'm going to do plying wise and then kind of go from there. Um, knitting. I've done some knitting, not a ton. I was doing a test knit for Sasha Green and it was for a cowl called a brioche cowl called Willow Moon and it has just recently been released. I'll put the link down below. So I did finish mine. I finished it in plenty of time. Um, okay, so here's the deal. And this was something I knew going into it. It's made with DK weight yarn and brioche. So it's super thick and bulky and chunky and all that kind of stuff. And I knew that I was never going to wear it. But I wanted the experience of test knitting. I wanted to um, get better at doing brioche. So here's the cowl. It's huge. Um, okay, so just between me and you, I didn't sew it up the back. You you knit it flat and then you stitch it up the back because I was considering ripping it out. Um, I know it's a lot of work and I enjoyed working on it and it was the process. I thought I could give it to somebody, but I don't know of anybody that's gonna wear this thick of a cowl because it's chunky. Now, I didn't soak it to block it. I um, just spritzed it and laid it out. I'm thinking of, of actually like soaking it and and lay, and like really, what am I trying to say? Blocking it out to see if this kind of opens up some. I mean, it's, it's neat and it's, but it's thick. Like where am I gonna ever wear it? <laughs> I barely get out of a t-shirt. I mean, like when it's cold, I put a long sleeve t-shirt on. I just am not a cold person and we don't have the kind of weather hair to be really cold. Um, but it's like, it is pretty cool. And so Michelle was over and she was saying, don't rip it out because she loved it and thought that it, it, it like, don't rip it out. So I said, okay, I'll actually cut the yarn because I haven't cut the yarn yet. It's still attached. I managed to take pictures of it. Um, see here, I'm still, I'm still got my umbilical cord here. I managed to take pictures of myself with it for my, for my Ravelry page to link to the pattern and all that kind of stuff. And hid, I hid all those, the yarn and the clips and everything. So I don't know. It's, it is lovely. I just will never wear it. So. I don't know, maybe I should block it bigger and give it to somebody for Christmas. That would be okay. Um, so anyway, these were my yarns. The gray one, that green was green that I uh, kind of over dyed a, a different green that I had. So, but it's like it's big. But it was fun. It was a really fun knit. It's a great pattern. She writes a really thorough pattern. She had pictures and uh, lots of explanations and charts and all that kind of stuff. I didn't follow a chart. I followed the written part because I, that just made more sense to me not knowing brioche all that well. And I feel like I have a really good handle on it. I feel like as I moved along, I'm caught on my foot. There we go. As I moved along, I, um, I was getting better. I was making less mistakes. I also started using stitch markers in between the re in between the repeats so that I could tell if I was off, you know, I was supposed to do whatever stitch by the time I got to the stitch marker and so that I could tell if I was off. It didn't have to take it out as often. It just took me a little while to figure that out. Um, so anyway, I'll put the link to the pattern down below. Now I got fuzz in my eye. I picked up, and so that was like such a main focus knitting wise, it was the only thing I knit for weeks because I knew I needed to get it done and I needed to, um, you know, give the feedback to the designer and all that kind of stuff. But now I'm picking up my sweater. So this is the Dark Water Sweater by Jennifer Steingass, who is Knit Love Wool. 
I picked up the sleeve and that's what I'm working on now. So not a whole lot of excitement, but I'm starting to get a sleeve. Um, when I knit the body of this, let's just, let's just admire how pretty that is. When I knit the body of this, I did helix knitting and I did it with two strands. And so I didn't get any pooling. I think it looks really good. Well, I picked up the sleeve and I started knitting it and I'm not getting any pooling on the sleeve either. And it's just with one strand. So I'm just doing it with one strand um, just because it's easier and it doesn't seem to be making any difference. So just I've got a ways to go, obviously, unless I wanted a short sleeve sweater. Still not sure whether I'm gonna make this a cardigan by sticking. Um, I gotta wait till it's done, blocked, and all that kind of stuff. But love this. And my bag's by Awesome Granny bag that I love. I know why I love it, because I picked out the fabric. <laughs> all right, another project that's a whip that has just started to get a little bit of love is the Mountain Cowl by Andrea Mowry. Um, I'll insert a picture because I only have a black and white and it's not very good. So I am making this with a gradient skein. I've talked about it before. I'm now getting into the purple. So my color is starting to turn purple. So working on that little by little depends on what I'm doing. That's something that I have to look at a chart um, every once in a while, but it's, it's not too bad. So those are my, those are my knits. That's all I've done. Um, I didn't even really knit very much when we went camping. Did I knit at all? I don't think I knitted at all, but it's fun because my Nano, my uh, spinning wheel runs off of a battery pack thing. So I sat there camping and was doing spinning, which was really fun. <laughs> I was really, it was really cool. Um, I recently received gifts and this is going to be a last but not least kind of thing. So most of you know Chevy Rell. Talked about her before. I love her. She's starting. She was uh, dabbling in some soldering and it was starting to look like she was maybe going to start selling them and I was really excited because I could buy one of her pieces. She sent me something. It's just the coolest. This is actual knitting in there. It's a real knitted swatch from when she made a swatch for something. It's got a magnet on the back. So I can use it as a, like a fridge magnet or I can use it as a, um, what do you call it? Needle keeper on my cross stitch. Or I could wear it. I could just put a, a magnet on the other side and wear it. She sent that to me just cause, cause she's awesome. That's why. And then she also sent me this progress keeper with this beautiful stone. Isn't that cool? So when I watched her last podcast, she was talking about the fact that she is going to open an Etsy store. And so I, I would definitely recommend checking out her podcast because she's just cool. She's like a super cool chick. And I love the fact that she loves to try new crafts and stuff because I feel the same way. I like to do the same thing. And so I just can relate to her on that. And she's a good knitter and she's just, she's just all around cool. So when she gets her Etsy shop up, um, definitely go check it out. But check out her podcast, Chevy Rail Stuff on YouTube, link down below. Um, and, uh, you can find out all the deets from that or even follow her on Instagram. So I really appreciated my little hand soldered little dealies because I was really hoping to get something of hers and I have it. So I think that's it for today. I hope, uh, this all comes out okay and looks okay and sounds okay. Feels really weird being in a different spot, but, um, I think it'll work. So follow me on Instagram if you want to kind of keep up with all of the stuff I'm doing. I've got some plans for some new crafts to do. I want to do some pour painting. I've talked about that in the past to put on some of these walls. Um, some new techniques that I'm seeing online that I want to try. So that's exciting. And um, yeah, that's it. So thank you for being here. 
thank you for uh, sticking with me and I know my videos are further apart than they used to be hopefully I can do it more often now that I may be able to do crafting a little bit easier I hope so um, yeah stay tuned thanks for being here be kind to one another and I will see you next time